Hello, and thank you for watching this short video on how you can leverage ETM Trace to give you more visibility into your application. I'm using the embedded uh, workbench for ARM, and I have a board connected to this device, and what I'm going to do is show you how I can leverage Trace in order to be able to get a little more functionality and to understand the flow of my application a little bit better. In most cases, when you select the device in the project options, the iJet Trace is capable of determining how to turn on the trace clock for this particular device. Now in order to use Trace you need to be using the full MIPI 20 connector and have all the trace lines connected from the device uh, to that header uh, but we'll go into that uh, in a later video. What I wanted to do is show you what happens when you have Trace enabled. So in the timeline window which is available from iJet and I already have it open here you can see that there's a call stack window which which I can enable for right clicking by right clicking in there and choosing enable. So if I start executing the code, you can see that I can tell exactly uh, what type of execution I'm doing and how deep I'm going into the call stack. Now the, the traditional call stack just shows me exactly where I'm at at this particular point in time, but as you can see, I can quickly go back and I can see uh, where I'm at in this application from the call stack, and I can also measure the amount of time in between uh, function calls. So if, for example, I want to see the amount of time from when I went into printf to printf full, what I can do is uh, click inside of here, hit control left arrow to select when I went into printf, control shift right arrow to select the area in between, and you can see that there were 22 cycles that executed in between the time I went into printf until I went into printf full. So if I zoom out, you can see a little bit more functionality and how the uh, call stack is moving. Additionally, if I go into the ETM trace window, I can turn this trace window on very quickly and I can scroll back through the application. And as you can see, I'm in a printf function right here. But if I double click, I can actually use my arrow keys in order to navigate backwards in time or forwards in time. And there's also a navigation toolbar that I can uh, use to go to the previous statement, next statement, and it gives me a lot of functionality to be able to quickly navigate through. So I can see where I was when I went into the printf and I can quickly uh, get through all of the trace data that I have. Now there are other ways that you can leverage this information as well. If I go into the function profiler and I'm going to drag and drop this to save a little bit of screen real estate. Uh, what I can do is if I right click inside of here you can see that it's going to use SWO trace but since I have a real ETM trace connector uh, connected to this I have uh, two different sources that I can do. There's flat trace and calls trace. So flat trace looks at just the amount of time I spend in that particular function. But calls trace looks at the amount of time I spend in that function plus any subsequent function calls that it makes plus any interrupts that occur during the execution of that function. So for purposes of demonstration I'm going to choose calls trace and we're going to let it run just a little bit and we're going to collect a little bit of information here and you can see that uh, the uh, how get tick is getting most of the information uh, but if I look into my accumulated time uh, the how sys tick or I'm sorry the system clock config is doing most of the execution and I can drill down inside of here and I can see all the functions that are being called. So this gives me a little more visibility into what's going on in my application. You can also see that there are diamonds that are put in the disassembly window. This is a code coverage. I can also do instruction profiling where I can see how many times that particular instruction has been executed. Uh, another functionality that you have uh, that's available to you as well is one called code coverage. And you can see that I have it turned on and I have the auto refresh. You can see that I've executed 5.80%. So if I drill down inside of here, uh, under make wave I've executed 14.81 but if I select any one of these statements it actually shows me uh, statements that I have not executed so this helps me to craft a test case in order to be able to execute that line in order to prove hundred percent code coverage 
the last thing that I want to show you very quickly is function trace and function trace is a little bit different from the ETM trace so what it does is it shows you a little bit higher level view how the function calls are calling one another and returning back so if you go into ETM trace this shows you every single instruction but in function trace you're seeing the function level calls so it's the difference between examining each individual tree versus looking at the overall forest. So as you can see, this uh, very quickly gives you a lot of visibility into your code. Uh, Trace is amazingly useful for diagnosing protocol timing issues because you get cycle accurate stamps. It also helps you to diagnose hard faults because if you go into uh, the trace window, the instruction that executed before you went to the fault handler is the one that caused it. So there's lots of amazingly interesting uh, information that you can glean from Trace and it can help you debug your application much more quickly. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you found it informative.